it's another Monday here with teacher Jenny join me for another topic this time we're going to talk about critical points okay uh, let's start with the first one so all we have to do once we wanted the critical points all we have to do is to simply start with identifying the critical numbers so first let's get the direct derivative of f of x so we have f prime of x that will be equal to derivative of x cubed is 3x squared derivative of 12x that's a 12. then we set our f of f prime of x to zero that will be equal to 3x squared minus 12. then we may swap we may write it as 3x squared equal i mean minus minus 12 equal to zero then we move 12 to the other side by adding on both sides 12 so we have 3x squared this will be a zero that's equal to a plus 12 so this will be a positive 12 or simply moving 12 to the other side so that means to say that from minus 12 that becomes a plus 12 then we divide this by 3 and so with this one our x squared now is equal to 4 get the square root so that we can cancel the square here our x will be equal to positive negative 2 our critical numbers are x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2 so since we have now the critical numbers all we have to do is to find the critical points we need those critical numbers to solve for our value of y so what we're doing now is we are solving for the value of y using our critical numbers we have negative 2 and then we have positive 2 so to get the value of y all we have to do is to go back to our original function we have f of x equal to x cubed minus 12x take note this is gonna be going back to an original function and from there we are going to substitute the critical numbers let's start with negative 2 this is now equal to negative 2 cube minus 12 times negative 2 this is now f of negative 2 equal to negative 2 cube that is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 this is giving us a negative 8 12 times neg negative 12 times negative 2 that is positive 24 and then f of negative 2 that will be equal to negative 8 plus 24 that's a positive 16 so if your x is negative 2 our value for y is a 16. next we go to 2 we have f of 2 we will be using still the same here f of 2 equal to x we are going to replace that with 2 raise that to the power of 3 minus 12 we have another x replace it with 2 this is equal to 2 cube is 2 times 2 times 2 that's 8 negative 12 times 2 that's a negative 24 so 8 minus 24 that's a negative 16 so our f of 2 is negative 16 so once you've got x is 2 we have a negative 16 for that one so on the second question if you've got there uh, what is the interval when f is increasing you may refer for this one if you can spot that right away but if not then we can go for this one here so to know whether the intervals or what are the intervals where the function is increasing all we have to do is to draw a number line and then plot your critical numbers starting off with the smallest one so negative 2 and then the bigger one so since we have now the critical numbers plotted those those numbers or regions there actually your critical numbers divide the number line into different regions we have here the first region the second and then the third that will serve as for us a testing area for our first derivative test this would somehow help us identify as to what will be the interval to which the function is increasing so how do we do that we are going to uh, go back to our 
first derivative result a while ago we have f prime of x that will be equal to 3x squared minus 12 out from here we are going to get uh, any value from the different regions starting off with the first region here so first one from the interval negative infinity because this is coming from the left side until our negative 2 so from that region all we have to do is to get a number the number here for x might be negative 3 so replacing f prime of negative 3 our x will be replaced with negative 3 so 3 times negative 3 squared minus 12 this is now equal to take note what we are getting here is only our sign not the value itself but the sign so since this is a square any number raised to a power of even numbers automatic that will be a positive so positive minus 12 so again this will not be telling us what will be our sign so we need to further check this out by getting the value so that we can know the sign here so three times the result here which is nine so three times nine minus 12 this is 27 minus 12. 27 minus 12 that's a positive so that means to say that this is positive so we go to the other case i mean the the other region so the region now is coming from negative 2 up to the number 2. so within that that values we are going to get a value of x so since zero belongs here i'm going to get this zero because that's a lot easier so f prime of x that's equal to 3x squared minus 12 we replace our x with a zero that will be equal to 3 times 0 squared minus 12. this one will become the entire thing or will make the entire thing a zero so we have a zero minus 12 that's a negative so that means this is negative next we go to the other region which is from 2 until positive infinity we're picking up value of x so we have positive 3 might be and then we have f prime of x that's equal to 3x squared minus 12 so we plug in f prime of 3 that's equal to 3 times 3 squared minus 12 3 squared is 9 times 3 that's 27 minus 12 that's also a positive result so this is a plus so out from here we can clearly see the intervals that are positive so that means once you have a positive interval that's an increasing graph or increasing interval for the function so the interval that is increasing is on the region 1 which is coming from the negative infinity up to the negative 2. So you can spot that one here because we have the first region with this interval. Now another one we have a plus here on the last region which is from the 2 until positive infinity interval so we also have 2 and then positive infinity as our interval next the intervals where the function is decreasing the one which got a minus sign that symbolizes a decreasing function so that means we have now from the interval there we have a negative 2 and then a 2 so we're done with our increasing decreasing intervals so next up is we identify the relative maximum points and the relative minimum points so if you recall a while ago we've got our tabular values for our x and y so let me just uh, create a similar look from a while ago we have x and y here wherein we've got negative 2 and 2 you can make use of that one and make use of the value wherein i think we've got 16 in there and negative 16 for that so you may use that one you may determine that this one is the maximum and this one is the minimum because we have a bigger value on 16 on the value of y and then we have a smaller value on y here 
So that might help you in determining the maximum point and the minimum point, but not all the time. Because some other times, there might be a mistake on your critical number. So that is why you have to make sure that you are going to check whether that's maximum or minimum. You can go back here. You can actually go back from here and know which one is the maximum and which one is the minimum using the signs that we've come up from the first derivative. So since on 2, negative 2, we have a positive, that means to say increasing. So from the left side of 2, that is increasing. And then we meet 2 there. And then we have on the right side decreasing. So out from there, we can clearly see that the point here is on the maximum level. So that should be our maximum point. So there. And then from here on to, we have from the left side, we have a decreasing. This is how we look at the decreasing. And then we have an increasing. This is how we look at an increasing. So automatically, we can clearly see that that is the minimum point. So relative maximum points, we have only one. We have negative 216. And then the other one is the relative minimum points. We have that as to negative 16.